Do not yield to threats or make them yourself. Remain open to the person or persons making them and offer to meet their real needs. Pauline Jacoby, 92 years old, a bit of a disability, climbed into her car with her groceries in the parking lot of the supermarket. Then suddenly, a man jumped into the car from the other door with a knife and said, give me all your money. Pauline calmly explained, young man, Jesus is always with me in this car. If you kill me, I'm going straight to heaven and you're going straight to hell. They talked on a little bit and before you know it, the young man was in tears, put away his knife, started to back out of the car. Then Pauline said, wait a minute, young man, and gave him all her money, which was about $10 at the time. This is a perfect example of threat uh, in nonviolence, how not to yield to it. You are uh, willing to help a person in need? Absolutely. Willing to yield to a threat? Never. So that's one side of our equation. The other side, of course, is um, not to make threats yourself. And here we have to draw a distinction between making a threat, which is saying, you better do something that I want or I'm going to do something you don't want versus having to, out of politeness, tell your opponent that if he or she or it doesn't stop doing X, you're going to be forced to do Y. So that's not a threat because you're upholding the best for all parties, whereas uh, the first example, give me what I want or, or else, is a situation of enmity, which is a win-lose situation. So that's pretty much uh, the story with threatening in nonviolence, how it uh, never fits in, either as a giver or a receiver. <laughs>